All right, so we have some more nomenclature to go over. We have a new chapter, chapter 19. It's over carboxylic acids. Um, so uh, carboxylic acids are this functional group right here. And um, page one of our notes goes over methods of naming it. And uh, it turns out that it follows very similar rules that we've seen before. Um, the first thing to do is find, and it says this on page one of the notes, um, find the longest chain containing the carboxylic acid. So um, this is the carboxylic acid. So the longest chain um, that contains that would be these carbons here. Um, so, um, so one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain. Um, and uh, we number, this is point A of that, that document, we number uh, the, the carboxylic acid as position one. So this is going to be position one, and then carbon two, three, four, five, and six. So our longest chain is six carbons long, so that's hexane. So um, just kind of how we always had naming with the old systems, and it's the same system here, is we have a prefix, a parent, and the suffix. <clears throat> the parent tells us how long the chain is. Um, so this is six carbons long, so it's going to be hex. Um, also part of that parent is usually, um, if it's an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne, uh, this only has uh, besides the carboxylic acid functional group, it's all sp3 hybridized carbons, just the alkanes. So we're going to have hex an as um, the, the parent name. And then the suffix is what tells us what functional groups are present. So which functional groups are present. Um, this is a carboxylic acid. With acyclic carboxylic acids, the suffix is oic acid. So... Um, this would be hexanoic acid, hexanoic acid. Um, what do we have left? We have the prefix left. The prefix just tells us where the substituents are and what they are. Um, this is a two carbon substituent. That's an ethyl group. Ethyl group. This is a one carbon substituent. That's a methyl group. So this is going to be two ethyl and four methyl. So um, putting this all together, this molecule would be called 2-ethyl, 4-methyl, and then we just put on the rest of the parent and suffix. So 2-ethyl, 4-methyl, hexanoic acid. Um, so that is how we name carboxylic acids um, that are acyclic. Um, cyclic molecules um, are similar, and, and this naming system is, should seem pretty similar to what we did with alcohols. Um, when we had an alcohol and we wanted to name that, the position that the alcohol was on, and this again is way back to chapter 9, so a long time ago, but the position that the alcohol was on was always given position 1, and that's how carboxylic acids work. Carboxylic acids here, so that's position 1. And again, that's also how cyclic carboxylic acids are going to go this is also going to be position one. Um, cyclic carboxylic acids have a little bit of extra rules, as all cyclic systems do, um, and they're on, again, page one. So first rule said the carboxylic acid is automatic, automatically position one. So there it is, position one. And, and technically, this carboxylic acid is off of position one, um, but the, in the acyclic system, the carboxylic acid always has to end the alkyl chain, or I guess we would say it would begin the alkyl chain here because it is a fully, like, if this carbon has one bond to oxygen and two bonds to another oxygen, it has to then, the, the only uh, bond it has left would be to the rest of the alkane. We can't have a carboxylic acid that is inside of a ring because it doesn't have enough places to bond to two other carbon atoms. So we number the position that the CO2H is on as position one. So that was the first rule, carboxylic at The carboxylic acid is automatically assigned position one. And then two, we follow common rules of nomenclature after that. So the common rules for rings is that we number to give the lowest possible 
combination of numbers. So if we number clockwise around this ring, uh, we, we have um, the substituents at positions 3, 4, and 6. If we were to number counterclockwise, and I'm going to number in, in, in green, The substituents would be 3, 5, and 6. So looking at that rule, number to get the lowest possible combinations of numbers, this combination of numbers is lower than, yeah, uh, this one's lower than the three, five, six. If you add these numbers up, they add to a larger number than that. Um, so, so we're going to do the black numbering around this ring. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what's the only difference here? Um, the only difference here is with the suffix. Um, instead of, since the carboxylic acid isn't actually in the ring, it's outside of the ring, um, we add carboxylic acid as a suffix. So cyclic we name as a cycloalkane then we add on carboxylic acid. So if this is just going to be named as a cycloalkane it's seven carbons along, so that's cycloheptane, H-E-P-T, hept. And then we have to put the substituents in. We're going to alphabetize the substituents. So the bromo's in the sixth position, so it's six bromo. Um, chloro is before isopropyl in the, in the alphabetical order. So it would be three chloro, four isopropyl, <coughs> four isopropyl, and then cycloheptane, it's getting pretty long, cycloheptane, and then we leave a space and we write carboxylic acid. So the name of this molecule is 6-bromo, 3-chloro, 4-isopropyl, cycloheptane, carboxylic acid. Um, so that is how you name acyclic and cyclic carboxylic acids. I just realized that I didn't do everything that was on page one yet. Uh, there was still this example of naming left, so um, I'm going to let you guys pause for a minute, um, name this molecule, and then um, then unpause and we'll name it together. Okay, cool. Um, so following the rules, we have to number from the carboxylic acid. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, that's the longest chain containing that carboxylic acid. So that's going to be octanoic acid. Um, so we'll, we'll actually just write that in octanoic acid. Um, it's eight carbons long. That's O-C-T, oct. Um, so what about substituents? We have a methyl here, CH3. We have a methyl here, another CH3. And we have an isopropyl there. Um, isopropyl comes before methyl in the alphabet. So we're going to put the isopropyl in there first. So it's 3 isopropyl. And then it's 2, 6 dimethyl octanoic acid. Um, so that's how we name this one. Um, some of you might be kind of forgetting some of the weird naming conventions, um, be thinking, oh, this is dimethyl. Why isn't that in front of the isopropyl in the alphabetical order? Um, it's not before it because we ignore the di when we're, when we're alphabetizing. We're just going with the um, whatever the substituent is, so methyl in this case. Um, iso is involved in the alphabetical order, uh, whereas di, tri, tetra, those are ignored in the alphabetization process.